So please put your hands together for Barry Farber. Farber. All right. Hello, Valpac. Do you know the two keys to success in sales? The two keys. Show up. The key to success is listening, asking questions. That's what we're going to talk about today, about discovery, about getting beneath the surface, about learning about your customer. But I still believe the most omnipotent, powerful factor in sales is confidence. Confidence that you love what you do, you're passionate, you believe in it, you know there's value there because the customer picks up on that. But take a look at this. Yes, life is a survey. Do you know how powerful it is? Not just to have confidence, but when you ask questions, you learn about that customer's business and about who they sell to and what challenges they go through. And, and you do things that other salespeople don't do to get beneath the surface to really bond with them. That's what builds a business. Confidence is great, but listening, asking questions, learning, not just builds a business, but saves marriages. Because I love athletes, entertainers, companies with a challenge. They say, Barry, can you do this for me? Yeah. I, I, my goal is to help people break through, whether it's to get into national accounts, I'll show you examples, or to get something on QVC sold out, or whatever the challenge is, I love it if there's value behind it, if there's something unique behind it that I believe in. Because if you don't believe in what you're selling, I, you might as well get out of the business. You know, statistics are funny. You know, I, I had to do some research on this company to make sure they did really, because well, statistics, they say that uh, doctors say that 8 out of 10 people suffer from hemorrhoids, right? <laughs> What's that mean? Two people enjoy them? <laughs> but, oh, I got them today! You know? Wouldn't it make more sense if a proctologist was called an astronaut? I don't know. <laughs> All right, whatever. You know, I'm just... Is HR here? I don't care. I met a guy who in invented a patent for a pen, and, and it was just on paper, and we took it, we made it. Long story short, I never got more rejection on a product in my life. It's a novelty, it won't work. You have the pen, I think. It's, it's on your seat. Everybody knows how to work it. That was the biggest obstacle in the first place. Nobody knew how to work it. You open it up, you snap it together, right? And you can snap it. See how it snaps? You know how you get stressed out sometimes in sales? <laughs> we all, like, see a snap? You can snap it like bubble wrap. Just keep snapping it. <laughs> it has some, you know, uh, use other than writing. Um, well, I got a lot of rejection on this, but I never gave up. I believed there was something with branding on this and whatever. So I went to QVC with a metal version, something where you pop up and you open it, it's a nice and gold and silver. And they rejected me, two buyers. They said, pens don't work on QVC. I finally got a buyer on the phone. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll walk home from Pennsylvania if we don't sell out. She goes, what? So I had a meeting with her. Five minutes. That's what they give you, this little room, five minutes, come in, have a cup of coffee, show me your product. So here's a question I think everybody should ask when you get back. The question is the answer, number four. Ready? This is what I asked her when I sat down. I had the pen. Before I even pulled the pen out, I didn't want to show her anything. I said, let me ask you a question. What are the three most critical things you look for when you invest in a product to go on QVC and do the dollars per minute that you think are successful? What's the wow factor? Can you wow people with something in a second on TV? OK, is it unique and different? OK, is it demonstrable? Can you demonstrate it? She started telling me all these things. She started telling me all about QVC and what sells, what doesn't. She started, because she was passionate about what she knew, what works, and what didn't. And I would say, you know, uh, and, and this really worked when you wow factor. Wow factor? Yeah, like for example. And then she'd show me products and give me examples. Well, we, sold, we got it on QVC, sold out in less than four minutes. But I'll never forget the fact that that is the best question to ask anybody and publishers when you're with, you know, what are the three top reasons you look for an author to come in here to, to, to sign a book with a heavy advance? What are the key things you look for? You know, platform, content, richness, pull me in real quick. You know, all, they, they start, what's Valpac ask? What are the three most important things you look for in an advertising firm or a company that's going to pull in customers for you? Have you, you know, what are the three keys you look for? Number six, catch a passion to connect. William Danforth is the founder of Ralston Perina. Have you ever heard of the company? Okay. Well, years ago in the 20s, he wrote a book called I Dare You, one of the most amazing books I ever read. It's like really thin and really fast, sold millions of copies. But he was passionate about helping people who either weren't financially well or didn't or had disabilities, whatever it might be, and he believed in them and turned them around. But um, his statement, which I never forget, is catch a passion for helping others and a richer life comes back to you. When your whole goal, sole purpose on that first sales call is to understand your customer and really understand what they're about, it just comes through in everything when you sit down and that's your goal. And we're going to talk about a few more things that get underneath the surface. Um, 
having a passion for helping others is something that not just builds your business, but, but just makes everything come back to you. There was a story about, a, I used to tell this a lot, I don't know if I told it to you 20 years ago, but there was a kid, Charlie, uh, they interviewed him on 60 Minutes or Nightline, one of those shows, and it was in California. And I see some people nodding their head. You might have remembered he had a rare form of thyroid cancer. He was eight years old, and, and they were interviewing him, and his, and his mother said that what he does is he buys, with his allowance, he goes and buys toys at the toy store and hands them out to all the kids in the cancer ward, right? And, and, and I was amazed at that. You know, here's an eight-year-old doing this with his allowance, and he's got the rare form of it. And so the reporter asked the child, I said, why do you do that, Charlie? And you know what his answer was? Because it makes me feel good. That's what his answer was. That's what it should be. You know, and, and, and the doctor said he'd die in six months. He, la he lived till he was 12 years old, six years further. He went into remission and he lived that long. There's something about when you, you know, unselfishly working with a client and you do something, whether it's maybe helping their kid get a job somewhere, connecting them to somebody. There's a million things you can do that have nothing to do with what you sell that build you a relationship that doesn't matter, where it takes price out of the equation sooner or later because they're buying you. They trust you and your recommendation. Hi, I'm Joe Bordeaux. When I reflect back on a business career that now goes back more than four decades, I have to say that I have come in contact with hundreds of folks in the sales business, sales leadership, personal achievement, that sort of thing. Uh, as the president of Valpac and as an entrepreneur myself, and I would have to say that Barry Farber is at the top of the heap. When I think of words that describe Barry the best, I would have to say, he walks the walk. And I think if you talk to me or anybody else he's ever done business with, you are likely to hear that Barry is a guy who under promises and over delivers every time. Not just some of the time, but every time. If you have an opportunity to do business with Barry Farber, you ought to take advantage of that opportunity. Hi, I'm Mike Ludlam, I'm Vice President of Operations for Entrepreneur Magazine, and we've hosted about 200 different conferences over the country over the last 20 years, and I've enlisted Barry Farber's help in presenting sales techniques and tips in about 15 or 20 different cities. His connection with the audience is something I don't see very often. He provides practical advice and simple tips, all with a, an element of humor to keep the audience engaged. Barry is an entrepreneur who lives what he talks about every day, and that's why small business owners respect his advice, and why I will continue to utilize his talents and expertise.